not only can we model compounds with Lewis dot structures, we can also model ions. So in this case, we have an important ion called hydroxide, sometimes referred to as OH minus. So for this particular ion, we have each oxygen contributes six electrons. The hydrogen contributes one, so we have a total of seven electrons. Then we notice that it has a minus one charge. And for each minus one charge on the ion, we add one electron. So that gives us an eighth electron. So seven plus one gives us eight total electrons for this system. So then just as we do for compounds, we try to allocate the electrons in such a way as to satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen. So the first two do that. And we try to satisfy the octet rule for oxygen. And we see that with eight electrons, we're able to simultaneously satisfy both of those requirements. Therefore, we imagine that this particular ion should be very stable, and it turns out that it is. And in fact, this ion is used to define an Arrhenius base. According to Arrhenius, a base is any substance that, once dissolved in water, generates this hydroxide ion, OH-. Now we can also investigate another type of system. Suppose that we add a oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom, not as an ion, as a neutral species. In that case, we'll have six plus one, or seven total electrons. So let me remove one of these electrons to mimic that system. Now we notice something that when we have the duet rule, to satisfy that we then need an even number of electrons. To satisfy the octet rule, we need to satisfy, uh, we only need an even number of electrons also. When, even when we share electrons to form bonds, a bond consists of two electrons. So therefore, if we have an odd number of electrons, there is no way that we could possibly satisfy both the duet rule and the octet rule. So therefore, odd numbered electron species are predicted to not be stable in the lewis langmuir theory. And it turns out that is true. We have these kind of species with odd number of electrons are given a special name. We call them free radicals. Now, free radicals have an existence, but as we might predict from the lewis langmuir theory, they're incredibly reactive. And they have two main ways of reacting. One of the ways is if this were, for example, to gain another electron, it would have an even number of electrons. So one of the ways that uh, free radicals can react is to become reduced. They can gain an electron. That happens sometimes. Another method is for two of these particular types of free radicals to combine together. So if I add two species that both have an odd number of electrons, the resulting sum will have an even number. And in this particular case, if two of these OH dots, these OH free radicals, were to combine, we would actually regenerate the compound hydrogen peroxide. And we see that the reactivity of hydrogen peroxide is very intimately related with the fact that oxygen-oxygen single bonds break easily. They'll break in such a way that each of the oxygens will take one of the electrons away from the bond. We call that homolytic cleavage. And we have these very reactive OH dot free radicals in that case. Another ion that is extremely important in acid-base chemistry is the so-called hydronium ion, H3O plus. How many electrons would we have in this system? Each oxygen has six. We have three hydrogen atoms, each of which contributes one electron. That gives us a total of nine electrons. What we notice in the ion, it has a plus one charge. For every plus one charge in our ion, we remove one electron. So we go from nine electrons to eight. So now we try again to distribute the eight electrons in such a way as to satisfy the duet rule for each hydrogen and the octet rule for the oxygen atom. And again, we're able to, to do that. 
and we have an even number of electrons, and this overall species will have a plus one charge. One thing which we haven't done in these types of models, which is important if you're drawing out Lewis structures by hand for an examination, is that typically we would put a bracket around each side of the ion and then put the overall charge to the right-hand side. So we haven't done that here, but you definitely want to do that if you're drawing these out on pencil and paper. So this is a hydronium ion. Uh, remember, we had previously spoken about the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. According to the Arrhenius theory, an acid is a substance which, when dissolved in water, will form H+. Now, it turns out H+, probably doesn't exist. And it's more likely that each H+, will actually combine with a water atom to form this hydronium ion, is H3O+. So another way of thinking about an acid is an acid is any substance, according to Arrhenius, that dissolved in water, which will form hydronium ion, H3O+. And this gives us an idea of what the structure of hydronium ion will be. When we had created the Lewis structure for the compound ammonia, we had noticed that on the nitrogen atom, it had one lone pair. So it had two electrons that it did not share with a neighboring hydrogen atom. And we had mentioned that lone pairs are often a sign of a pr property called basicity. So ammonia is one of our most important bases. And one of the things that bases do is they react with acids. And particularly, we transfer an H plus ion to the base. And in the process, we form what is called a coordinate covalent bond. So the, the result that we get if we react ammonia with an acid is the ammonium ion, NH4 plus, one of the absolutely most important ions in all of chemistry. So we like to be able to create the Lewis dot structure for that particular ion. The chemical formula is NH4 plus one. The nitrogen contributes five electrons. Each of the four hydrogen atoms contributes one. That gives us a total of nine electrons. But since the ion has a plus one charge, for that plus one, we remove one electron. And that again gives us a total of eight electrons that we have to allocate. And we're able to allocate them in such a way that each of the hydrogen atoms satisfies the duet rule and the nitrogen atom satisfies the octet rule. And this is what we get. So we notice that once the H plus has reacted with ammonia, say this is, was the, originally the lone pair, once we have the ammonium ion, that particular bond is indistinguishable from the other bonds. So the all four bonds are identical. So again, if we were drawing this, we would put brackets around the left-hand side, bracket around the right-hand side, and put a plus one, uh, plus, single plus sign to show that we have a plus one ion. And this is the ammonium ion. When we encounter hydrogen in chemistry, the most common way for us to encounter it is as an H plus ion which we had seen will quickly react with water to form something like hydronium. We can also experience hydrogen as individual hydrogen atoms. Later on, you'll see that uh, how one of the ways that they form most commonly is for H2 gas, the H2 molecule, to sit down on top of platinum, nickel, or palladium, and it breaks apart to form hydrogen atoms, each of which has one electron, which is a free radical, and that particular form of hydrogen is incredibly reactive. The least common way, but it is also extremely important in organic chemistry, that we will find hydrogen is as the hydride ion. Hydride ion is H minus. So each hydrogen atom will contribute one valence electron. And then since it has a minus one charge, we add one more electron and gives it a total of two electrons. So we can see that the hydride ion satisfies the duet rule for hydrogen because we're able to fill up both of the holes in the required gray area and there are no leftover hydrogens. 
when we encounter hydrogen in its form, it is almost invariably as a very strong reducing agent. The two main compounds, which you'll learn about in organic chemistry, which generate this particular species, are lithium, lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. So those two compounds will be very, very important once you start to study organic chemistry.